The Raspberry Pi Pico W is an excellent microcontroller device. You can even use it for your robotics project. I am controlling my robot car using my mobile phone and you can see how responsive it is to my command. Using only my Pico W, DRB8833H bridge motor controller, a DC-DC converter and batteries, then I was able to control the movement of my robot car. You can instruct it to move forward, backward, turn left, or turn right. It is also possible to adjust the speed of your robot car. I have used MicroPython in developing this project, and because the Pico W has Wi-Fi capability, then we can create our own controller that we can access through our mobile phones. As we need a real-time response to move and stop the car at that instant, then I have used WebSocket protocol for the message exchange. Full video is on the description. If you want to learn more, then let's start exploring. Hi, welcome to Don's Key Tech. In this video, I'm going to be exploring how to build your own Raspberry Pi Pico W Wi-Fi robot car using MicroPython and MicroDot library. So this is the overall design of our Raspberry Pi Pico W Wi-Fi robot car project. As you can see, there are three important components that powers our project. One is the robot car chassis with the motor controller. Next, we have the Raspberry Pi Pico W and the MicroDot web server. The MicroDot web server creates a web application that we can access on our mobile phone browsers. Using this web application, then we can instruct the Wi-Fi robot car DC motors to move accordingly. So for example, if I click this move forward or up button from my d-pad controller then the wi-fi robot car should move forward the same also when i click the backward button then the robot car should move in reverse we can also change the speed of the robot by changing the value of this input range as you can see the micro dot web server and my micro dot web application running in my mobile phone communicates using WebSocket protocol. The WebSocket messages contains the command that the Wi-Fi robot car should do. So this image shows the wiring and the schematic that I have followed for this project. As you can see, I have used only chip components so that it is not required for you to buy expensive car kit just to get started with robotics with your Pico W. We'll only be needing the following components such as the Raspberry Pi Pico W, the DRB8833H bridge motor controller, the robot car kit, the LM2596 DC-DC back converter, and a series of 18650 batteries. So just follow the wirings here so that you can follow along with the project that I have created. So this table is just for your reference. So just in case you wanted to cross-check the wiring and schematic that I have created earlier. Now, let's proceed to discussing the code. The code for this project is available, by the way, in my GitHub repository, which you can find in the description of this video. As far as the development is concerned, I have used the Tony IDE in developing this whole project. So this is the files or the project files needed for you to be able to create or run your Wi-Fi robot car using the microdot library. Let's scan through the files needed in order for us to follow along with this project. So the very first thing that you would notice is this robotcar.py. So this is the class or the I created a class called robotcar to represent our chassis which contains our dc motors and as you can see this robot car class contains methods such as the move forward backward turn left turn right and stop and the way that i have programmed this class robot car is by using the pwm so by sending the pwm signal in the drb8833 h bridge motor controller then we can set it into the particular direction or motion as you can see 
in this particular move forward, if we set the, the first pin as high or 1, then we will be able to set it to move forward by sending a PWM value in here. So the PWM value that we are sending is dependent on the duty cycle that I have here. So the lower the duty cycle, then the faster the rotation of the tires. If you're not familiar with the DRB8833, I have a separate video regarding how you can control that H-Bridge motor controller. Aside from this movement, there's also the capability to change the speed. So I am expecting a value from 1 to 100. By the way, this is 1 actually and to 100. And whatever the value that we have here, I'm just using the that value to set the current duty cycle. So the duty cycle should be set from between 30,000 to 55,000. And by using this function, then we are going to change the speed of our DC, motor, DC motors. So basically, that's all that we have here for the robot car. Now let's go into the other files, which is the boot.py. The boot.py is what we're going to be using to connect to our Wi-Fi network. So just change the SSID and the SSID password here according to your network credentials. Next, we'll go into the main.py. The main.py is where we set up our web server and where we are going to receive the web socket exchange also with our web application. So as you can see, I'm importing everything from the micro dot. So if you're not familiar with micro dot, I have several videos and posts regarding how you can get started with this uh, library. Uh, the job of this micro dot library is for us to be able to easily create web server and web socket server without going too much into socket programming. So as you can see from the code here, we just created an application called micro dot and we have pre prepared the pins that we're going to use for our Raspberry Pi Pico W and we create an instance of a D robot car. There is a dictionary here called the car commands. So whenever I receive a web socket message as a forward, then I'll just instruct the robot car to move forward. Same also with reverse, then I'll just call the method move backward. These are routes that I am using to serve the web application. So in the index route that I have here in my micro dot, then I'm just sending the index.html here, which is the web application that I use where I have created the D-pad and O-pad controller. Then this is the easiest part. By just adding this at with web socket decorator to our function here, then we are now able to create our web socket server. So whenever we receive commands from our web application, then what we're going to do is just call the appropriate command for our robot car. So for example, if I receive a forward command, then we'll just call the command here, which is robot car that move forward. If I receive a message called related to speed, then let's just call the robot car that change speed. There are other utility functions here, like this function we're in we should can shut down our web application and the serving of the static files, which are the HTML, CSS, and the JavaScript. And this is the main file which runs our micro dot web application. As you can see, without programming any low level socket, then we are able to create a web application. That's the beauty of using the micro dot library. Then, as you can see, there are micro dot specific files here. So these are project files that I have just copied from the micro dot uh, source repository. So these are, I have not written these files. So just copy it there from the source repository. Next, the important part is this index.html. This index.html is our controller for our Wi-Fi robot car. And the important part in here is this one, this link in here, and with, with the navigation called the D-pad. Using cascading style sheet, then we are able to control or show a D-pad controller in our web application. Just take note of this data dash direction. So for example, the up button as a data direction forward, and then the right has right, reverse, and left, because we are going to need this later in our JavaScript. 
So that's basically how the code in the index HTML here, the range slider here for the speed control is just basically an input type with a range. And we just set the value of the robot car change speed by changing the value in this input type range. Next, we can go into how we styled our project. I'm using the min.css here. So basically, this is a, a small CSS framework that I'm using so that uh, we can style our web application much better in mobile. And this custom.css is just basically the CSS that we're using to be able to style our D-pad controller also and some minor changes in our web application. So basically, that's all for this custom.css. And the important part of our project is this custom.js. This is custom.js is the one that will handle the WebSocket message exchange. And as you can see, I just created a WebSocket here and it will initialize a socket and it will communicate with our WebSocket server. The important part of the WebSocket is that it contains a function called send message wherein whenever we, we receive some command, then we'll just send WebSocket.send and this will be received by our WebSocket server. Next, we have here the speed settings. Uh, so if I change something in the input range, then I'm going to send a message. So the message is the value of the input type range. Next, for the OPAD and the DPAD controller, these are the two important functions, the touch start and the touch end handler. As you can see, for each event that I am, for each navigation that I click, I'm just extracting the direction. So if I, if I click the up button, then I'm, I'm extracting the forward. What happens here is that I send the message forward into our WebSocket server. And the WebSocket server will just tell the HBridge motor controller to move the two DC motors forward. So as you can see, this touch start and the touch end are only ap applicable in our mobile. So if anything that is related to touch gestures, the web application will listen to it. So if you're using your mobile, your browser in your laptop or your workstation, then you need to go into the developer tools and then set it into mobile responsive if you're using Chrome. So basically, that's all for the code and how it works. If you wanted to learn or explore more this code, I have explained this thoroughly in the companion write-up, which you can find also in the description of this video. And that's all for this project. I hope you'll have fun uh, building this project on your own. That's it. Happy exploring!